Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to uh, begin this listening session as soon as I can get my equipment working. There we go. All right. So uh, first of all, um, this is our opportunity in the leadership panel to listen to what you have to say, but I will tell you that we need your help. So there are some particular things I'm going to ask you about, but before we get to that, uh, I would like uh, our leadership panel members to introduce themselves briefly to you so that you can tie names to faces. My name is Vince Cerf. I'm Vice President and Chief Internet Evangelist at Google and Chairman of the leadership panel of the Internet Governance Forum. Benga, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thanks, Vince. Uh, Benga Sheson, Executive Director at Paradigm Initiative and a member of the panel. I am Huria from Ethiopia, a State Minister for Innovation and Technology and a member for Leadership Panel. Thank you. I'm Hiroshi Oshida, uh, Vice Minister from uh, Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs and Communication, Japan. My name is Lisa Fuhr. When I'm not on the leadership panel, I'm Director General of Etno. Etno is the European Telecom Trade Association in Brussels. My name is Maria Fernanda Garza. I am the chair of the International Chamber of Commerce. We are the institutional representatives of over 45 million businesses of all sizes and industries in over 170 countries. My name is Hatem Duidar. Uh, my day job is the CEO of a telecom uh, operator that connects a couple of hundred million people in Middle East, Africa, and Western Asia. Every time I listen to those introductions, uh, my mouth drops at the uh, incredible uh, accomplishments of the people who are sitting on this panel. But all of those accomplishments mean nothing if we don't manage to make the Internet Governance Forum the forum that we want and need. So many of you are probably well aware that the uh, WISIS Plus 20 comes in 2025. The World Summit on the Information Society will have taken place 20 years before. And in 2025, the question will be raised, should we continue to operate the Internet Governance Forum? And the answer to that question, in many respects, will have to come from you. And the reason for that is that you're here because you, I assume, find value in this forum. We, as the leadership panel, need to be able to articulate those values so that when the member states of the uh, General Assembly decide whether or not IGF should continue, that their answer will be positive, in part because of the things that you have to say about it. So one thing we will ask from you is in this session, to tell us the things that you like and think we should continue, to tell us the things that we should do that we are not doing, uh, to tell us uh, the values that you experience from participating in the IGF. We know that there are many constituencies represented here in this meeting. This is, by the way, the largest of the IGF meetings ever. And so you represent a very important milestone in the story of this uh, institution. Uh, but, uh, and because there are that many people here, some 8,000 altogether, including 2,000 who are remote, uh, there must be a reason that you're willing to spend the time and energy and, and money to get here and to collaborate with the rest of the multi-stakeholder multi organizations. So we're interested in hearing from you. Uh, the other thing that, uh, that I, would like for you to be aware of uh, is that we also are expecting the summit for the future or the summit of the future coming up next year in September. And at that event, we will hear what the Global Digital Compact is about, what its substance is. 
there has been some discussions about the need for a forum to go along with this compact. And I'm here to tell you that the leadership panel believes that it should be the Internet Governance Forum that helps to assess how well the compact is working and whether or not there are changes that are needed. So you have a pretty important role to play in your own future. So I will first ask whether any of so, oh, we have one. Would you like to introduce yourself? I didn't catch you until you uh, got on the stage. Carol Roach, I work for the government of the Bahamas, new MAG chair. The leadership panel is hoping to be invited to an emergency meeting in the, Thank you. In the Bahamas. Definitely. So, uh, so actually, and, uh, if any of the uh, leadership panel would like to augment what I've just said, feel free to do so. But I remind you, our purpose is to listen to what our colleagues have to say. Uh, but if there's something you'd like to bring up now, this would be a good time. Please. Thank you, Bint. And last Sunday, we presented the Internet We Want paper that we worked through all this year. And we need you to help us in this uh, new stage for this uh, important vision that we have accomplished, in order to accomplish it. During this next year, we ask you to please help us identify the barriers that are the main obstacles to help us achieve these visions. So you, as the IGF uh, members, are, are the most uh, ideal people to understand exactly which are the barriers in your particular region, in your country, and, and globally, and work with us to set all the, 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 the path to achieve this vision with specific goals, with uh, ways to measure it, establishing the right KPIs, because we, we need to move forward faster than we have been moving in achieving this vision. Thank you, Bint. Uh, Lisa has something to say as well. I just wanted to add very quickly, because uh, Maria is right, we want your input to the internet we want. We want your input to our work in general. But we're also going to consult with other communities and we will try to uh, do an outreach uh, broadly on both the internet we want, but also on topics uh, that we're trying to solve within the, the leadership panel. Thank you. So I have to admit, you know, over the uh, 18 years that this event has been held, much of the time we've talked a lot about the internet that we want. What I think we now have to ask ourselves is what internet do we have right now and what, what do we need to do to make it better? And it's my guess that the barriers that were mentioned earlier differ from one country and one locale to another. I know in the United States, for example, although penetration of internet service is pretty good, in our rural parts of the country, it isn't. And we're spending $40 billion to try to improve that situation. So uh, I'm going to, uh, unless there are any other comments I'm from the leadership panel, I'm going to ask you to drive this session. Tell us what it is that we need to know in order to justify and evolve the IGF to, uh, to be the entity that we would like it to be. So uh, the floor is open. There are microphones at the front of the uh, two aisles here. If you would come to the microphone, uh, I will recognize you. Uh, we'll try to switch back and forth if the queue builds up in both sides. By the way, the Secretariat assures me they are taking notes. Uh, and of course, this session is recorded, so we'll have that to refer to as well. Would you identify yourself uh, before you make your intervention? Good morning, gentlemen and ladies. It's actually afternoon, if you oh, don't mind okay. the criticism. Afternoon. I'm James Gregor Asuelo uh, from the Republic of the Philippines and a member of UN SDSN Network and the Chamber of Commerce of the Philippine Islands. And uh, I have some few questions to the members of the panel. Um, we all know that every internet penetrations drive impact to 
uh, GDP in each of the countries. And yet, uh, it's quite challenging that most of the private corporations and telcos will not invest in, in rural areas. So my question is, how we can drive private investments to bring connectivity to the far flung communities and underserved communities through the intervention of crafting policies and legislation to attract investments? Thank you. So um, I, I, if there are people on the panel that want to respond, wave your hand. And re I see Hatem and also Yoshida, please. Hatem. I so, think so many I, I understand uh, Hatem. I'm sorry, Hatem first and then you. Is it okay? Hatem. Uh, I think in many countries the, this dialogue is going. Uh, there is universal service funds in many places where a part of the uh, taxation that goes to the telcos uh, is put back into encouraging coverage in rural areas. Uh, and this is not only happening in emerging markets, but at, as Vince just said, the government in the U.S. pledged $40 billion dollars to cover rural areas, so this is everywhere. I think this is something that needs to uh, continue as a dialogue between governments, regulators, uh, and telcos to make sure that the telcos are not seen always as uh, a kind of an easy uh, uh, goose that lays a golden egg, but in some cases, there needs to be investment or tax relief to help them invest sustainably in rural areas. At the end of the day, these are also customers, these are good for business, good for the economies overall, good for the ecosystem. So I can speak on behalf of many telcos, I sit also on the board of the GSM Association. All of them would love to cover everywhere, but I think it's not the uh, job of the telcos alone. Need supports from regulators and governments to make sure that they make the right environment for these investments. I, I echo on the point that uh, the government should uh, play uh, some, some role in deploying uh, infrastructure in rural areas. Um, it is not profitable so that the, uh, it is not uh, possible to invest only by private activities. And uh, so that uh, universal, in, a kind of universal service fund is uh, one solution, or a subsidy can be one solution, but uh, it can, it is even, it's even difficult to cover all the rural areas. And uh, so the new technology can help uh, in some way. Uh, for example, uh, maybe you all know that uh, mobile technology allowed a leapfrog for some developing countries uh, where uh, fixed networks are not deployed. But uh, now we have uh, other technology that is non-terrestrial network. So we have a uh, layout Leo satellite network, and also we have a system of uh, hubs. Uh, it is high altitude platform system that can cover um, 50 to 100 kilometers wide, but with with one system. And uh, such new technologies can uh, efficiently um, cover. Uh, system allows to. Uh, cover efficiently in rural areas. So, uh, discussing private sector, the government sector, and um, in, including uh, utilizing such new technologies. Thank you. So there is at least one other answer uh, derived from this most recent comment. The uh, low earth orbiting satellite systems bring technical access to the internet literally anywhere on the globe at least if they all achieve their objectives. In the case of Starlink, it's 40,000 satellites and others are coming along. There is, however, that's the technical side. There is a business question, how much does it cost and is it affordable to the people who are in those uh, rural regions? And if it is not affordable, two things can happen. One is competition and you see that there are multiple LEO satellite systems that are uh, anticipated. In the absence of competition, another possibility is subsidy coming from governments in order to help citizens in those parts of the community that would not otherwise have access. Uh, but I want to encourage you to keep pushing for, uh, for making that happen. We have another question at the other microphone, please. Uh, would you introduce yourself before you ask or, or comment? 
Sure. Thank you very much, Wint. Uh, I'm Peter Brook. I'm the chairman of the World Summit Awards, and we know each other very well because you have been on the board of directors of the World Summit Awards from 2003 to 2006. Uh, and you know uh, my bias is very much a content bias. Uh, while uh, your skills and uh, incredibly global competence is being on a technology bias, and I think that this is, when I look at the document, the internet we want, there is a technology bias to it. 2023 is the first year when five companies have gained 54% of the advertising revenues on the internet. Global advertising, uh, advertising revenues not just on the internet, but in total. So what we are looking at is the internet as a historical force in terms of economic concentration. You know the devastation it has wreaked, wreaked on the media companies, the legacy media companies, newspaper publishers, especially all around the world. I'm just coming from Canada. There are 564 community papers which were closed in the last six weeks, which is leaving communities up to the size of one million people without a local paper. The impact on this, of this on a number of different kind of uh, local and regional and also national processes of political participation and democracy we are not even seeing it yet. There are certain kind of aspects, you know, which we're looking at in terms of disinformation and others. But I think what I'm asking the leadership panel is to include in its consideration the absolute need that we look at how do we deal with the monopolization in the market through the technology of the internet and what is it being done, and what are the recommendations of the leadership panel that IGF and also the Visus Review in two years or in the next year and a half is actually saying to this? Because I think we are looking at this as a real shift of power based on the technology. Thank you very much. So I'm going to respond, but I invite the other panel members to as well. I think your points are, are well taken with regard to businesses whose business models have changed as a consequence of new technology. I would suggest, however, that it's not the leadership panel's responsibility to solve the problem, but it is our responsibility to make sure that the IGF brings to the table people who can consider various solutions to the problem. That might turn out to be legislators, it might be regulators, uh, it might be uh, parliamentarians, uh, and it might be people with new ideas for business models that would make these uh, important services, particularly news, uh, refreshed. But the reason I'm reacting is that I want you to, I would like you to understand that the leadership panel isn't the place that makes those decisions, it's the place that tries to facilitate those discussions to get at answers to the question that you just raised. Fully understood, yes. Uh, thank you, Peter, for the feedback on the Internet One paper. Uh, and of course, thanks for your work in content over the years. Um, two things, one is there is an opportunity for us, which is why we're here, uh, to get feedback from you on this. Uh, Beyond this conversation, there's also, you know, the Secretary will open the paper for public comments and contributions, and, you know, we'll love to follow up with you on how to reduce the bias that you've mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next question on the other microphone. Thank you, Peter. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't no, see right. there's a third microphone. I apologize. I thought there were only two. Okay, I'm, I'm shorter yeah. than the camera. So uh, yes, well, there is that me. problem, too. 
Hi, my name is Chad Garcia Ramilo. I'm the executive director of the Association for Progressive Communications. My question is about process and, the, and your role as the leadership panel um, in bringing, um, in connecting the IGF outcomes to the different processes, as you've mentioned. Vint, you said, you know, it's one of the things that you want to see is that the IGF being the, the, the body that will sort of monitor or bring these this discussions. It's not a, one of the things that have been discussed here that's a diff, that is not easy to engage continuously is the, all these different uh, processes happening at the same time as well as um, now and also in the coming, in the coming what year. It's not easy, it's going to, res to include resources. And one, I think one of the questions here is how, as a leadership role, would you be able to really connect those processes in a, in a way that is really practical so that it actually helps inclusion. It helps to ensure that there is enough uh, participation, especially for, for those of us in civil society and other stakeholders as well. And in, in practical terms is what I would really like to hear, because then it will also help us plan ahead. Um, and also to be able to see what would be meaningful and how we can react. Because if there's not enough information, then we're not able to then give you also practical when you're asking us how we want to contribute, we're not able to do that if we do not know the exact ways and processes and mechanisms of participating meaningfully. Thank you. So I think there are several ways. This is one of them, of course, uh, but not the only one. Uh, there is this thing called email, and we all are willing to receive the email, and we'll rely on the Secretariat to invite uh, comment uh, to draw uh, attention of the leadership panel and I want to add, by the way, that uh, it's not just the leadership panel. The MAG is another super important part of the lifeblood of the IGF. Without it, you wouldn't have the structure that we are experiencing this week. This week. And so I hope that all of you in the room recognize that there is a partnership between the leadership panel and the MAG and all of the members of the IGF. Second point, I think, which is equally important, is that the national and regional internet governance, governance uh, activities may be as important or even more important than the annual meetings because they are local and they know what the local problems are. They can articulate those things. But if you're looking for specific advice about how do we get, how do we receive your input, uh, I would suggest, first of all, email uh, to uh, the leadership panel. Uh, through the Secretariat is one path. I don't know, Chengatai, if you want to respond at all with other avenues for getting input. We will be sending out requests for, uh, for your comments. We could create forms, I suppose, if that makes it more comfortable. But right now, we're looking for comments on the draft paper that we've written, comments on the issues arising in today's conversation. So I'm going to, uh, that's, that's as much as I can say right now. Yes, Lisa. I think it's a very uh, important point that um, many of our problems might be global, but they need to be solved local and also to be perceived and analyzed in a local context. We can bring that to, to the IGF as such once a year, but it's, actually the input that is getting collected in the national and regional IGFs that will analyze and bring that important analyze and analysis back to us. And, and this is what we will try to do, both with uh, our, the internet we want, but also our broader work. Okay, let's keep going. I'm gonna take the center microphone now since we already had these two. Uh, Thank you. Please reintroduce yourself, please. Uh, Kusai Al Shati, I'm the chairman of Automated Systems Company from Kuwait. Um, thank you for giving this opportunity. Um, after almost uh, 15 years or 18 years of IGF, uh, evolution is inevitable and uh, it is the nature of things. And to improve any venue is to evolve it into a better uh, format. Um, what made the IGF successful is its inclusive nature, where all multi-stakeholders talk, dialogue, speak together in equal footing. Uh, 
while it is meant to be a policy dialogue, it became a capacity building venue, it became a best practice venue, and it, it became the soft power that influenced the internet-related, internet governance-related organizations. Because we spoke, we agreed, we disagreed, we come into a conclusion, we had a consensus, we know what to talk about right now and what to leave for later, uh, to be discussed later. So the evolution of the IGF to a better format uh, is uh, uh, Expected. This is the nature of things, to, in order to make it alive. Uh, and today, when we talk about digital, for the common, digital is internet, and internet is digital. So, the the the, the common stakeholder, digital or internet, is not that much of a difference for him. So, uh, whatever the format that we want to improve uh, the IGF into. Uh, in 2017 to 2019, we have the process which is called IGF Plus, which is meant to evolve uh, uh, as an evolution of the IGF. It is stopped, it, it transformed into digital compact. Uh, that's possible. Our concern is that whatever the evolution, it should maintain the fact that the, uh, the, inc the inclu uh, inclusiveness of the IGF, the multi-stakeholder uh, uh, participatory nature, where all in equal footing we are talking about any issue presented. And the fact is that it is a non-outcome oriented event, non-outcome. One of the main factor of the success of the IGF that we are not under the pressure of an outcome to discuss. So we, op we speak openly without that pressure. And that, uh, let the decision be in another place, but here, we should maintain the non-outcome nature also of any evolution version of the IGF. Uh, the last thing is, we know that we have a summit coming in September. It may decide or it may uh, formulate or initiate the process of how the IGF will be, uh, uh, will evolve, uh, whether it's in digital compact or digital compact under the IGF. Our concern is that this process so far is giving us the sense or the, uh, uh, let's say the, the indicator that it will be kind of a governmental, intergovernmental process. We wish that it will be also a multi-stakeholder in nature or, or either other stakeholders can attend in an observatory uh, role uh, just to contribute and maintain the multi-stakeholder status of an event. Uh, and that, thank you. So I will guarantee you that no one on this panel would disagree with the importance of maintaining a multi-stakeholder posture for all of the functions that uh, are associated with the IGF. It's fundamental and, and essential. Let me take a question from the microphone over here. Thank you. My name is uh, Rulof Meyer. I'm the CEO of SIDN, the registry of the Netherlands country code domain. Um, Mr. Surf, if I understood you correctly and without wanting to literally quote you, um, I think in your introduction I heard you ask the room at least two questions. One, should the IGF continue? Should the mandate be extended? And if the answer is yes, do you have any observations on improvements or other suggestions? Um, could, could, I, I, could I interrupt and say that I believe it should continue? The question, others, others are going to ask that question yes. in the WISIS plus 20. I got that. We one. want the answer to be yes. So, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that the answer would be yes Good. in answering you. Um, we, I cannot speak on behalf of the Netherlands IGF, but I can, I can talk about what we did there. We have a very active NL IGF, and this was exactly the question that we asked, I think, the whole group about a year and a half ago. Um, so, we, our answer was yes, the mandate should be extended, but we also have some recommendations for improvements. Um, there are 16 in total, I won't, give, I won't read all of them to you, but I think there are some that might be interesting to read them out now. They're, they're in three areas, they're about governance, they're about the dialogue itself, and they're about results. And I think the last category is the most interesting one. So about governance, uh, one of the recommendations is that um, 
the, um, the IGF gets a more transparent decision-making process, um, but also a, f a firm uh, financial support. Yes. On dialogue, um, we have that the IGF has a more substantive focus. I think we have too many areas, too many themes that we try to address and that we don't really get to the bottom of the issues in most cases. Um, a more transparent uh, system for deciding on which workshops will, be take, will take place and which won't. And also more interactive format and less formal presentations. So more real discussions. And it's also important that um, people who participate make clear who, the re who they represent, what their interests are, what organization they work for, come from, and what the interests are that they represent. And on the results, um, we feel that the IGF should lead to more concrete proposals for national and international internet policy development, which I think is pretty clear, but we're, I don't think we're really very successful there yet. And the IGF should inspire substantive dialogues in other UN organizations. And the IGF should deliver standards for practical examples that can be applied locally, so nationally and regionally. Uh, would, I can send would, you the whole document. Yes, please do that. And uh, we would like to share that, of course, with the rest of the IGF. I assume you would be okay with that. Definitely. Uh, I do worry about the use of the word standards, though, um, because I'm not quite sure what kinds of standards you might be thinking of. Standards. Well, I th did I mishear you? You live as practical standards on, well, for instance, we, we had some discussion in the session before this about standards for um, improve or reducing the, the footprint of the internet and digitalization in general. And of course, you need practices and best practices before you can develop standards. But I think there's still a lot of ways that we can learn from the best practices of some to be implement, implemented by all. Um, we should take this offline, but I want to pursue this a little further because I'm worried that you might be speaking of technical standards, which is not the strength of this organization anyway. No, I wasn't uh, necessarily. Yeah, no. okay. We'll come back to that, but okay. please do send to... Uh, I will, thank uh, you. Send uh, that document to us. It sounds very substantive. Okay, we'll take the middle microphone. Oh, I think she was first. Oh, I'm sorry, we were there. We were circling all the way around. It's your... Yes, you're up, please. Uh, yes, uh, are you standing at the microphone there? You might want to just pull the microphone out of the... Uh, there you go. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Honorable Mishimboko. I'm a member of parliament from Kenya in Africa and also a commissioner under the Parliamentary Service Commission. I'm in charge of information and public communication. This is where we use technology to link the citizen with the two parliament, that is the National Assembly and also the Senate, to understand the issue of legislation, oversight, and also representation. So for me, I find this conversation to be very useful. And I'm just thinking that, is it the right time? Or maybe you have some plans, or rather, you have already done it, that we have universal declaration, or rather, universal laws in terms of internet and technology, whereby the member states can sign and also be compelled to domesticate the same in their country. Because I believe that if we have such laws, this is the only way we can also address the inclusion gaps on the venerable groups such as women, girls, migrants, and also refugees in terms of technology or other internet. I'm also thinking that it is high time that we have to digitalize so many issues or other some transaction. For instance, in my country, till to date, we are still using cash in terms of some transaction. Like we pay land rent using cash, and this is where you find there is a lot of corruption. So one way of minimizing this corruption or other fighting corruption, we need to go digital so that at least we do away with we, we will do cashless transaction, and that is why we can minimize corruption. So for me, I think it is high time if we can have universal declaration, the way we have done on issues of human rights, the way we have done on the issue of the rights of women, the rights of people with disability, so that at least we can be at par as a globe. 
I thank you. Hey, well, two things from me. First of all, I am delighted that you're here. It tells us something about the utility of uh, being at the IGF. Uh, and I hope that the sessions that you've been able to participate in have given you an opportunity to repeat what you just said to people who might be able to achieve those objectives. Let's take, uh, let's see, we're going around this way, so we'll take the, the far, to the, your far right, my left. Thank you for the floor. My name is Jacques Beglinger. I am uh, co-secretary of the Swiss National IGF. I'm also involved in the in regional European IGF. My question is very brief. Uh, what does the leadership have in mind if, for a future form of IGF to foster more the role of NRIs? The first, the first thing that we want to do is visit with them more. We would like to have more interaction with them. We discussed this, in fact, in a, a recent meeting today, that we would like to have more direct contact with the NRIs uh, and the regional uh, organizations. Uh, the mechanisms for doing that may involve personal uh, visits to the NRIs or some regular correspondence. It's our understanding that there is a regular coordinating call among the NRIs and if that's the case, then we would propose that some of the leadership members participate in those calls. Though, to the extent that we can, we'd like to be better connected. Let's take the center microphone. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, hello, this, I'm Christopher Tay from Connect Free and, and Internet3. Um, I think that we're kind of proof that um, the IGF is working. Um, we, we're doing something sort of controversial, and that is, instead of getting an IP address from an ISP, which might be commercially entrenched, uh, or might be bound by uh, governmental uh, problems, we allow individuals to create their own IP address through a public-private key pair. And what this has allowed is um, people on the ground in all these different places all around the world, and even if you think about it uh, over the sea or in the air or even uh, in the future in space and maybe on the moon and in Mars, to be able to get their IP address without having a centralized um, you know, body so that they can create internet wherever they need to be. And so, um, I think that, you know, again, to reiterate, we're proof that this is going to happen, but something magical is also happening here in Japan, and that is, in the 1990s, um, the telecom uh, uh, known as NTT, um, they were um, not broken up, but they were bound by law that they could not become an ISP on their main fiber optic network. And so what this has done is created a lot of different ISPs within Japan and strengthened the internet uh, diversity here in Japan. And so in their model, um, they have a nationwide switching uh, network which allows other ISPs to come on board. And our software allows us to also become an um, ISP on this network, an ISP of individuals. So um, I really would like the IGF to kind of look at telecoms in a way that telecoms, it's not the telecoms are the enemy. They're, they're our friends and they're very important to create infrastructure, but to um, make sure that we have a border between the second layer and the third layer of the internet so that there's innovation that can happen at all layers. Um, we believe we have a certain interesting technology, but I think there's a lot of people in technologies, and we hope that at IGF, that this, this um, process of being able to be open and, and um, being able to share ideas together continues. Thank you. Uh, well, I have to react uh, and, and say that uh, it's an interesting idea that you've just described. It's sort of like indirect addressing, I would guess. I would su suggest, however, that the right place to take this is not the leadership panel, but rather to the Internet Engineering Task Force. We are looking to do so. Thank you. That's, that's the right place for that particular target. Okay. Uh, let's go over here to the right -hand mic my right-hand microphone. Hello, distinguished high-level panel. <clears throat> First of all, my name is Bakhtiar Mamadov. I'm deputy head of administration of the <coughs> Ministry of Digital Development and Transport of the Republic of Azerbaijan. And we were honored that 11 years ago, we were host in Azerbaijan of the IGF Forum, which uh, stipulated development of the internet and all infrastructure of the digital development of Azerbaijan. And it was a great pleasure for all Azerbaijan to host one of the fathers of the internet, Mr. Vincent Serv. And by the way, I pass uh, Azerbaijani youth, which includes uh, my son, uh, his greetings and all best wishes. They are uh, virtually looking forward to this uh, event. And uh, also what I want to mention that uh, affordability and accessibility is very important part 
of the development internet and different governments put their efforts for development of this accessibility of internet and in Azerbaijan we targeted on 2024 uh, in entire country to have affordable and accessible internet minimum 25 megabytes per second uh, for each uh, citizen of Azerbaijan, no the matter of in which part of the country they are living. And also, uh, we think that uh, this format, IGF, should continue because it's really great value of the result of the World Summit on Information Society, where Azerbaijan actively participated in both uh, in two, uh, 2003 uh, in Geneva and 2005. And also, there are different mechanism of the uh, United Nations. Uh, Azerbaijan is a uh, uh, chair of the non alien movement. And uh, how do you see cooperation of the different United Nations organizations uh, direction uh, on development, accessibility, affordability for internet? And also different regions initiated uh, different projects, such as, for example, in Azerbaijan using the uh, fiber optic uh, infrastructure, satellite, others, and initiated a uh, digital Silk Road. And uh, could such a mechanism like IGA for other specialized institutions participate actively on the development of this process because it is a uh, regional and global initiative? Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having hosted the IGF. You've already made a great contribution there. Uh, with regard to uh, the technologies that might improve the situations of access to uh, internet. Um, my guess is that we will see uh, increasing amounts of capacity coming from the overhead satellites and increasing amounts of capacity with undersea fiber. Uh, and those two will contribute to better access over time. So we thank you very much for that intervention. Let's go over here to the far, my far left. Thank you very much. My name is Auke, Auke Pauls from uh, KPMG the Netherlands. I work in the responsible AI practice. And for the past years, I've had the privilege of being part of this community, being part of this internet governance forum. Um, and what I've learned in, I started as a youth fellow, now grown up a bit, uh, working in a consultancy. However, um, I've really valued the multi-stakeholder model that we've um, that, that that we have in on this forum. However, with the coming negotiations regarding the global digital compact, uh, I'm a little bit worried about about this model and about the structure of fu the future of um, this forum, but also other digital fora. Because coming now from a private sector, I really value to give input on this forum, but also extract information and opinions from others. And I really value that. And I think this model should continue and be in place. Um, and I hope, and I'm really asking the leadership panel as well to, to fight for this and to, um, yeah, to keep continuing this model uh, in the future. I can assure you that everyone on this panel believes deeply in the multi-stakeholder model. It is very satisfying to imagine that the, United Na that the uh, United Nations has accepted and is supporting a multi-stakeholder process within what would otherwise be a largely multilateral environment. So uh, we hope to be the grain of sand in the oyster that continues to make sure that the multi-stakeholder voices are heard. So thank you for that support. Let me take the center. Uh, thank microphone. you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Rodney Taylor, the Secretary General of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. And uh, I want to congratulate my, my, form, my fellow Caribbean colleague, Carol, on her um, chairmanship of the, of the mic. Did you say that you were commiserating with her? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulate. <laughs> and uh, I, I do agree. I mean, um, I, I want to echo the support for that, the, uh, offer support for the comments made before with respect to support for the NRIs. Um, we are hosting our 20th IGF next year in the Caribbean, the Caribbean Internet Governance Forum. So it's, it's one of the oldest, if not the oldest. And uh, I was pleased also to be able to work with our 
fellow small island developing states to host the first SIDS IGF, which was also recognized by the UN. So I know there are, there are mechanisms for supporting the NRIs, but uh, as you mentioned, perhaps even by, by way of your involvement, uh, we have had involvement by, say, Chengatai and others who have lent their support uh, to our efforts. Um, we have also been making inputs to the Global Digital Compact uh, through the deep, dive, the deep dives, and uh, <clears throat> we are supportive of that process, but we would hate to see uh, another forum uh, globally, say a digital forum, where you know it's just so much bandwidth that you have to cover yeah. cover these meetings. Um, outside of this process, as you well know, there's there are other policy development processes taking place. Say, for example, in ICANN and within the registries, the regional registries, and therefore um, we believe that the IGF remains a very useful mechanism to consolidate um, the, the global governance with respect to the internet. Um, lastly, I'd like to say that perhaps we can look at mechanisms for lowering the um, barriers to hosting these, this uh, global IGF. Um, I would love to see one in the Caribbean, perhaps even Bahamas or, or someplace like that. Um, but we understand that facilities such as provided here by the government of Japan, excellent facilities by the way, uh, would present a challenge for many of the small states. So perhaps mechanisms for maybe offering hybrid um, um, format that would allow for smaller states to host. Thank you very much. That, you know, this is an interesting concept of the smaller states hosting. The hosting that, that we have done in the past, that has been done in the past has been sort of on block. Here we are in Japan, everyone is here. Uh, I wonder whether a group of, uh, of states could host in other than their countries. In other words, they could be hosts, but the actual meeting might be held in a place that has the capacity to deal with this scale. That could be a stupid idea, but it's just a way of allowing the smaller states to have an opportunity to play uh, the role as hosts, even if they're not physically in their facilities. Anyway, just a thought. Let's take uh, the question over here on the right. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Nigel Hickson, UK uh, government. Firstly, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to thank you and to thank all the other members of the leadership panel for your work and contribution to the, to the IGF. It's, it's, it's really great to see you sitting here this morning and answering questions from this, uh, from this, uh, from this audience. The second point I'd like to make is that your role will become increasingly important as we come towards the WISIS Plus 20 yes. review process. For many of us, the IGF, and particularly the national and regional, regional initiatives, has become fundamental to the way that policy is developed on a global scale, to the way we interact, to the way we collaborate, to the way we make friends, and to the way we make progress on the information society, the internet, or whatever we might call it. And we want to see this continue. We want to see this develop. We want to see the WISIS Plus 20 process bring forward a new realization of what the internet can do for us, but also the challenges that lie ahead. We want the WISIS Plus 20 process to endorse the value of this incredible collaborative effort. And we want it to endorse the need to go further in terms of the connectivity agenda, the sustainability agenda, and the desire that the internet should be multilingual and diverse in all its aspects. So, Mr. Chairman, I think we would ask the leadership panel to do two things. One, to continue your excellent work. And secondly, to invigorate the IGF, to support the brilliant work that the IP sorry, the IGF Secretariat does, to strengthen their resources where possible, and to also ensure that other stakeholders, because your eminent members of the leadership panel talk to many other high-level stakeholders, to make other stakeholders understand the importance of the continuation of this body. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nigel. Much appreciated. Let's go to the center and then over to the left. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. Let's do the center and then we'll do the left. 
Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry, Zotin. <laughs> Thank you very much. I just much. wanted. I just wanted to make you yeah, mad at you. Yes. you know Thank you very much, Vint. Uh, 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 I echo uh, Nigel's uh, uh, words in, in expressing the appreciation of the, for the work uh, you are doing, uh, the contribution you are doing to strengthen the, the IGF and the multi-stakeholder um, model for internet governance. Uh, the, the first ans the answer to your question about if we want to extend the mandate, the answer is absolutely yes. And while there is room for, for uh, improvements. Uh, is clearly the war is much better with IGF than without IGF. <laughs> and this is uh, the IGF uh, allow us to, to deal with uh, controversial things in a very safe uh, um, and educated manner, uh, exchanging ideas with other colleagues, other stakeholder groups, and um, before they uh, come up in a, in a form of public policies, uh, when it's too late to try to, to, to influence or to, to have these kind of dialogues we have here. So the, the what improvements we can, uh, what we can improve in IGF, I think that the resources is clearly a, a, a barrier. I agree with Nigel that the secretary does an, an impressive work, uh, but so we want they to do more, but, uh, but we, we need to also to secure the resources to support them. I think that's the, the, the um, interact with IGF should be much easier. And uh, for the, the, we should create uh, uh, tools for anybody in the world to participate in fully in IGF discussions and processes without coming to the meetings. And, uh, and is, I'm not speaking about streaming or, or open consultations. I'm, I'm saying that uh, we should find easily the resources and the uh, and, and people should know that what the best uh, practice forum produces and what the policy network produces. And this should be much easier to, to find and to interact and to provide comments and to participate in the, in, in the discussions. And, and just one more point, uh, because I, I'm I will take your uh, invitation to submit uh, written comments, and, uh, but the, I think that the, also the meetings should be much easier to, 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 work, <laughs> to work through. And it's, uh, we are uh, running from one room to another. And we have uh, uh, sometimes uh, three workshops uh, about the same topic with the same speakers repeating the same things. And we, we should try to organize them. So if, if, there is a, if, if this is an important thing, so we should bring them together and have one session. So in total, counting the, the, the main sessions and workshops, we should not have more than 20 sessions in total. So instead of having 100 people in the rooms, we could have 400, 500, and we could have the, the policy makers participate fully engaged in the discussions with all stakeholders about the topics that uh, really matter. Uh, but uh, uh, I have more ideas, but uh, I, I will accept the invitation well, to... Yeah. First to of all, we Thank welcome you. those ideas. Second, this point about having too many meetings uh, has come up more than once, and the idea of trying to compartmentalize things a little better uh, is a very attractive point. And so, I, the, uh, and then since the MAG chair is now here and listening to that, she has the first bug in her ear about that structural uh, change. Thank you. So, so these are good points. Let's take the question over here. Oh, yes, please. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairperson, can you allow me to switch in French? Uh, well, is I it can. it too complicated for you? No, no, it's easy. <laughs> uh, I just need to uh, select. Please go ahead. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I think... It's not just to be entertaining that I'm going to speak in French, but I do want to say that this meeting, with all the UN languages that are available here, I think it's important to, to do this. I nonetheless don't want to repeat what others have said, but I would nonetheless like to say that the IGF continues to have various protagonists here. I'd like to share an experience with you. When there was the first IGF, I was speaking to one of the people from the European Commission. And I said, well, it would be interesting to start with things on a national level, regional level, and then maybe move on to a world level. No, no, they said. 
it would have been far too complicated to do this. There would have been too many meetings and we wouldn't be able to keep things going. But now I understand a little bit more what he was saying, because I feel that today, the situation we find ourselves in, we have these myriad international organizations that say we're going to make things complicated for everyone. There are processes right, left, and center. There are various texts, for example, that are written by the Secretary General, then you have the ITU, then UNESCO comes up with something, and then what do we as individuals do? We can't really follow what's going on. And then I heard someone in the room next door, I think it was someone from the Swiss government saying, it's normal, it's diversity, is it not? But as we see that the number of meetings continue to rise here and all the processes that are on course, are just going to be unmanageable for all of us, for those of us who are the end users. And these are the people that I'm trying to represent. Thank you very much. We now heard more than once that it would be attractive. I'm Sébastien Bachelet. I forgot to say who I was. I represent of DISOC of France, but I'm also the president of the end users of ICANN. Sorry for not having said that earlier. Thank you. Thank you very Monsieur Bachelet. Uh, so we've heard more than once now that people would like less chaos in these meetings, uh, and so we will uh, take that on board uh, as an, uh, a request for more structure and perhaps less complexity in the, in the scale of the number of meetings. We've all experienced this in other venues like the Internet Engineering Task Force where 100 meetings happen over the course of a week. Let me take the center microphone. Thank you, Vint. Um, my name is Christine Alida. I uh, represent the Egyptian government. And uh, <clears throat> I would like uh, maybe to start by saying that the establishment of the leadership panel was an important milestone of the Secretary General's Roadmap for Digital Cooperation. And we really thank you uh, for all the work that you've done so far. And um, we sure can tell an increased um, um, interest in the IGF um, on, an, on, on a global level. Uh, uh, but uh, I think one of the most important mandates that are listed in um, uh, the leadership panel in uh, terms of reference is to promote a greater impact of the IGF. And I think that we've heard all through those days here at the IGF that, we, that the whole community is talking about the importance and the, the impact that the IGF had so far done and uh, the importance of having this uh, viewed uh, on a larger scale. Um, so I'm sorry if I'm bringing back again the GDC uh, to the mic because this has been uh, probably said many times. Um, but uh, if we look at the issues paper that was uh, put forward by uh, the co-facilitators, uh, is, there is a clear message that there is a need not to reduplicate processes, and we've heard that a lot, but also to fill in uh, the gap uh, for, digital, for global digital cooperation uh, in order to respond to rapid technological changes, and we've heard many of that. So I think what I, uh, what I try to say here is that um, we would like to see the leadership panel continue its effort, but also we'd like to see more integration uh, of the leadership panel within the work of the IGF specifically in uh, collaborating, integrating, and liaisoning with the different components of the building blocks of the IGF, uh, the MAG, um, happy to see Carol up there, also the NRIs. And I think um, all the components of the IGF should work on one front towards achieving that greater impact that we're looking for and put forward a proposal uh, specifically ahead of the Summit of the Future, a proposal that comes from the IGF community in a way ahead of the Summit of the Future and building towards DOSIS Plus uh, 20. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your suggestions are very consonant with discussions that we've had about more integration and interaction among the leadership panel and the other components of the IGF writ large. Uh, we are literally out of time. Um, if you have a short uh, intervention, we could accept that, but we may not be able to respond very much. Please go ahead just briefly. I speak in French, please, in French. I have uh, two comments which I would like to put forward to the leadership in terms of the IGF. What we have heard here 
from the beginning has been rather interesting. The word that we hear time and time again is the word stakeholder, to be inclusive with the largest number of people. We can maybe have an IGF, an extended IGF, that will allow people who cannot be here that they can maybe gather in one specific area and to take part remotely to also be able to follow what is, happen, is happening and to interact if it is necessary. We have already taken part in various programs like in Google. We have worked on various programs which made it possible for us to disseminate this event to other participants who couldn't come here on site. They could be, we can, we can create an event and it could revolve around the IGF and we could explain to them in more of the vernacular, if you will, of what is happening within the IGF. And secondly, for an, more, an inclusive an event, I think you could register or you can access only uh, online. It, we should be able to be able to follow our event more, more easily remotely with greater accessibility. I think that this would be feasible. I feel that the current registration process, I, I do understand that we should have a simple link that you could just click on and you it is laborious, if you will, to be able to even register, to be able to attend this specific event. And we have talked about this ad nauseum, about the various capabilities that we could have and I think that this has to do with training, education, and bringing this more to the people, especially vis-a-vis -vis AI, artificial intelligence. Now, I think that we really need to look at and review what education actually means to provide this information, to foster this specific environment and domain, to bring it down so that it trickles down to the very people for us to undertake all of these additional endeavors. I can even think of different programs to provide support at the local level where there is the most need. We need to have training programs, support programs. We need to have local stakeholders that need to be part and parcel of this endeavor which we are undertaking. In addition, we also need to look at the risks, uh, the various innovation, the various uh, other projects that can contribute. We can also contribute to this new era, which we, in uh, this new projects, which we all are, are all committed to and are undertaking. Thank you. Thank you very much for making your intervention brief and to the point. Uh, we do hope that some kind of uh, increased ability to participate uh, in hybrid mode will be made feasible. Uh, we need to call an end to this uh, meeting, but thank you all very, very much for your interventions and your advice. Uh, we will report back to you uh, as best we can how we have digested uh, what you've had to say, and we will apply that as we work our way towards the next year and the Summit of the Future and finally WISIS Plus 20. Thank you all very much, and good luck with the rest of the meetings.